Fire can be a very devastating thing. All-consuming, fast-spreading, and in the right place, it can be impossible to escape. Whether it was an accident, electrical fire, or arson, fire doesn't care who you are. With the right fuel to grow, it can be a death trap. And nothing says death trap like a fire that broke out in an underground rail station. Today, we'll take a look at the devastation caused by the King's Cross Station Fire. King's Cross is a station located in the London Underground. It consists of two main lines, but services six different tracks. In 2019, King's Cross was the most popular station, clocking in around 88.2 million passengers entering and exiting the station. The station's first line was planned in 1851. The Underground Network had been a risk for fire since its opening. Limited space, crowds of people, and a labyrinth of escalators made it a disaster waiting to happen. Smoking is not permitted in the London Underground due to this risk, but on November 18, 1987, one commuter would throw caution to the wind in the form of a match that sparked the most dangerous fire in the London Underground. At 7.30 p.m., passengers started to report to a ticket taker that they had seen a small fire at the bottom of the escalators near the Piccadilly line. The 43-year-old investigated going down the escalator and spotted the fire, where he put it out and went back to work, thinking nothing of it. He didn't tell anybody else what he had seen or that it needed to be addressed at all unaware that the small fire had actually jumped from a much larger problem that was brewing underneath the escalator. About 15 minutes later, passengers continued to complain to a different worker that they had seen smoke as they ascended the Piccadilly escalator. This time, it was safety inspector Christopher Hayes who went to go investigate, as more people started commenting on smoke and even flames that were appearing underneath the escalator. Hayes once again failed to call the fire brigade, instead going to the escalator machine room, passing by sprinklers that he was unable and not trained to operate. The sprinklers were on a system that was run and operated by a completely different department. By now, the fire was starting to grow a little bit out of control for Hayes to handle by himself. Luckily, a police officer, aware of the situation, rose to the surface where his radio started working, and he called for the fire brigade. Hayes, meanwhile, escalated the situation to let passengers know that something was wrong. He roped off the Piccadilly escalators and directed people to a different stairway. As more time passed, the fire gained more fuel. In the ticketing hall, thick black smoke began to creep in as the fire elevated the escalators and started melting the rubber off the handles. Passengers were now starting to panic as the fire rose up the escalator to the ceiling, a ceiling that held over 20 layers of old paint on it that was now absorbing heat as the flames licked at it. Years before, the directors of operations stated that the extensive amount of paint layers were going to pose a fire hazard, but of course, the suggestion was ignored. A critical point in the disaster. At 7.45 p.m., a train passed through, causing a flashover, which is a massive ignition of all combustible material in an enclosed space. Flames shot up the escalator and spewed thick black smoke into the ticketing hall, superheating it to 150 degrees within seconds, and killing, injuring, many people. 700 people were now trapped underground. Many of them were escaping through the Victoria Line, but several police officers and passengers were trapped in the Metropolitan Line, where they were eventually saved by a passing train. 30 fire crews, roughly 150 firefighters, were deployed to the station. 14 ambulances took the injured to nearby hospitals. In the end, 31 people lost their lives to the fire, 19 were seriously injured, and 100 were taken to nearby hospitals. The fire burned on until it was finally extinguished six hours after it began. It took so long because the station's blueprints were locked in a cabinet and nobody had the key. 
It was like navigating a maze. The accident taught us a lot about how to prevent this in the future. Investigators noted that a huge contribution to how fast the fire spread was that the combination of the angle of the escalators and the passing by train caused what was coined a trench effect, something we didn't know about before this fire. We learned about the importance of communication across all level of employees. Workers should have told others about the complaints customers were having before the tragedy took hold. Staff was not informed, trained, or authorized to use the sprinkler system, which seems like a huge oversight. No one took blame for the lack of training, but it taught us that every employee at every level should have the proper safety training. Why the sprinkler system was run by a completely different department makes no sense. We learned the importance of organization. There was no real fire training back then, so nobody really wanted to take charge of the situation and figure out what to do. Finally, just like my video about the Iroquois theater fire, nobody listened to the warnings. Before this incident, nobody took fire safety seriously in the London Underground because it had never happened this badly before. It was another case of many people had to die before we did anything about it. After this incident, many senior leaders of the underground resigned, and much-needed safety regulations were put in place, including replacing the wooden escalators with metal ones, easing congestion of the passengers, and training the staff on what to do in the event of a station fire. Thanks for watching. For more true crime, true horror, and bad horror movie reviews, please consider subscribing. Game with me on Twitch every Saturday, follow me on Twitter, and as always, be well.